Hey everybody, my name is Adam L. Baird, AKA Big AB, and I am a core contributor on a project called NX. Um, and today I'm gonna go through a whirlwind tour of a really cool way to do web development. Um, so you've probably already heard of a project called Next.js. It's that cool you know, framework for making Jamstack sites either statically generated or SSR or that awesome, sweet hybrid approach of the two. Uh, but what you haven't probably heard of is NX. Uh, and so what is NX? Okay, it's basically a suite of dev tools to improve developer experience. And it's a CLI package on NPM, so you can do NPM install NX, and you'll get all this cool commands that you can do to help out your development. It's extensible because it's plug-in based, so you can basically make it do whatever you want. And it's open source, it's MIT licensed. So if you feel like you want to contribute or you know you need to fork it or something, it's all completely open source. I'm gonna show you a bunch of commands that'll help out your development that NX gives you. So there's the first one is create NX workspace. If you're used to like create React app, this is really, uh, you know, or create Next app, this is very familiar. This is gonna create an NX workspace, which in our world is a mono repo. It's where your organization is gonna hold all your, you know, applications and all your shared libraries in one space. And that'll really help development. I'll explain why further. And then it's got this NX generate. So the concept of schematics comes from Angular, but NX lets you use it across any framework, including you know, Next.js and React. Um, NX serve is basically like a dev server and it uses something called builders, also from Angular, but again, sharing out this. And schematics and builders come from plugins, which is sort of the heart of all of what NX does. Uh, then there's an NX build, which is basically uh, you know, taking an application and, and compiling it into some sort of artifact. NX test is for running whatever unit test runner you have configured, and we have the same thing for end-to-end -end tests. So now, I said that NX is the heart of it is plugins, and we have a lot of them. You can run NX list and see a whole list of them. There's sort of official ones, then there's community ones. And the one I'm going to focus on today is the Next.js plugin for NX. And in just eight commands, I'm going to show you something awesome and how easy it is to get started and get rolling. Uh, if any of these commands scare you, I do want to mention that there is a, a GUI that you can use that you don't have to memorize commands. They're much easier to sort of discover and see what you can do. Uh, and it's a plugin for VS Code called NX console. Uh, so to start off, I'm just going to create an NX workspace. I'm going to say create NPX, create NX workspace, and then the organization name. This could be whatever organization. Again, you're going to have all your applications and your libraries in one place. So name that appropriately. And then it's going to ask you like, oh, what do you want to put the first application in there? What kind of application do you want it to be? And I'm going to choose Next.js because it's awesome. Um, this is going to be, let's just say my marketing website or something. That's going to be my first application. Now, don't get scared about this thing. I'm going to run all through these, and then I'm going to show you what I made. So these commands are basically just, I'm going to create another application. I'm going to do NXG, which is short for generate. I'm going to use the Next.js app, uh, sorry, Next.js plugin to create another app called Uber for Star, because I don't know what I'm making. It's just a demo here. Um, and then I'm going to use the uh, Next.js plugin again to add a page, which is a Next.js concept to that Uber for, and I'm gonna just call this dashboard. Then I'm gonna create a shared library, which is gonna be shared components, which both the marketing site and the Uber for star are gonna use. Uh, then I'm gonna add some components to that library. Then I'm going to use our storybook plugin to configure storybook for that shared components library to get sort of a design system up and running. And then I'm just gonna use NX serve to serve my Uber for app. And let me show you what kind of that gives me. <laughs> So this is sort of a splash page that you're going to get um, on here. You'll note we added that dashboard page. So I've got that dashboard page. It's empty now, but it's basically it's all set up for you. Uh, we got Storybook all set up for you. And this is great. Storybook has like a ton of things you can add. It's sandbox development for each of the components, as well as like you can add documentation, a whole design system here. Um, let me show you some of the code real quick. Uh, we've got... Uh, you know, here's our workspace. And like I said, there's sort of a split of our projects into apps and libs. And apps is your applications, libs is your shared libraries. We've got that shared components thing in here. Um, uh, and this is where those components live. This is the source code for those components. And in our apps, so we've got our marketing website and our Uber for app, you know, whatever that is. Um, but you might also notice here, <clears throat> we've got these end-to-end -end directories as well. And these are for writing Cypress tests. These are all configured for you, are all set up. So you can just start writing end-to-end -end tests, which is a great experience in a great way, mixed with also we have Jest for writing unit tests, a fantastic way to work. And so uh, our Uber for app is just like any other X next JS app that you might expect. It's got pages, public, whatever. And in our pages, you can see there's that dashboard page we created and you can have this nested if you're familiar with Next.js. And I just wanted to show you. So we're going to use these shared components inside our index page here. And the way you import them is just, you know, sort of prefixing them with this scoped my org. That's what I named the org. You can name it whatever you want. And then just the name of the library. And that's how easy it is to share code across the applications and to break out code into different shared things. 
Now, one of the main parts of an Annex repo is the fact that we've got one package JSON in the whole thing. It's at the root. And the reason this is important is because Annex sort of handles all these dependencies for you. And why that's good is because it, this will protect you from like a whole swath of problems that mono repos can sometimes run into where, you know, you've got one project that is lagging behind its versions behind. It's hard to update. Uh, you know, this department never, ever updates. So they're like six versions behind. It's really frustrating. You sort of get to ignore all that because Annex is going to make sure that everybody's moving together. Everybody's upgrading together because it's one set of dependencies. Um, it also handles that uh, import syntax that I talked about where you can sort of scope it to the org, making it really easy to share code. Um, and then because NX handles these dependencies, you get to sort of have uh, a way to sort of compensate for some of the problems that mono repos can have. Uh, one major thing is once you get into like hundreds of shared libraries and hundreds of apps, uh, you don't want to run them all every time you, you know, want to run your tests or want to run your build. And so what NX does, it's got this thing called computation caching, where after you've run a test or a build, it sort of caches the results and puts them somewhere. And now the next time you run that, if it knows that it doesn't have to change because none of this code could possibly affect it. It just hands you back that cache. So it's like, oh, I don't need to change. I don't need to rerun. Here's the results from it, making it super fast. And then we can even take that one step further with an offering we have called NX Cloud, which basically takes those computations and it puts them in the cloud. So if I run a build that takes seven minutes on my machine and then my coworker immediately runs that same build, theirs will be almost instant because it'll just download the result from the cache and display it immediately or put it into the build or whatever it needs to be. Super cool stuff. Um, and so what NX brings to the table is it allows you to sort of easily create these applications with all these commands that are easy and consistent amongst all your teams. Uh, makes extracting shared libraries super easy because everybody is moving together with their dependencies and you can always sort of make sure that you're not gonna break anything by my update because everything's always going together. Um, and the generators, like I said, to save a bunch of time and also keep things consistent and uh, a way to reinforce best practices, both with generators as well as like ESLint rules for one, you know, across all your code bases. It's good stuff and same CLI and stuff. It has all these modern tools, Cypress, Storybook, Prettier ESLint built in because of the plugins and of course, Next.js because of our Next.js plugin. Um, and our Next.js plugin in particular uh, can create and configure Next.js applications, which is super cool. Uh, it serves them in the Next.js dev mode. It can create pages and components and uh, it can build production ready Next.js apps ready to deploy, as well as of course, Next.js's feature of completely static apps. Uh, so if that interests you at all, this was crazy fast, but you wanna learn more, go to nx.dev, the easiest URL in the world to remember and uh, go through one of the tutorials, check out what we can do. And of course, try out our Next.js thing. I'll answer any questions after this. Thanks.